All right, so let me share my screen. So can you guys see my screen there? Yep, looks good. Perfect. Sure thing. So I'll just introduce myself. Um, I noticed on the Kohathon uh, web page, everybody else had their full name there, but all of my presentations just said George. And so it's like uh, nobody remembered that I had a last name. Um, I'm George Williams. I'm the next search catalog coordinator at Northeast Kansas Library System. I used to be the president. Uh, whoops. Let me do this. So I've got my notes. So I'm the North uh, Next Search Catalog Coordinator at Northeast Kansas Library System in uh, Lawrence, Kansas. I used to be the uh, president of Koha US. Um, people are often confused about NECLS. Um, NECLS provides many services to all types of libraries in Northeast Kansas. There's 117 libraries that are members, um, but uh, only 51 of those member libraries are part of the Next Search Catalog shared shared public catalog, uh, which is our Koha uh, service that we provide. Um, and we've been using Koha since 2008, and we've been on Community Koha, uh, hosted by Bywater since 2011. And before I came to Kansas, you know, I worked for the Latah County Library District, which is where Lizette is now, um, part of the Valnet Library Consortium. And I was there when uh, Valnet migrated to Koha. And before that, I had a couple other library jobs. And I have a degree in uh, medieval British literature from Boise State University, uh, which is why I'm wearing the Broncos uh, sweatshirt. There's nothing that really can prepare you for working at libraries and being a Koha system administrator, uh, like, uh, like knowing about uh, medieval Arthurian literature and reading Chaucer and Beowulf. My, my master's thesis was on Beowulf. So, and here's my contact information. I've also got uh, everything that I've prepared. Let me find the chat box. Oh, I lost the chat box. Uh, I'll send out a link to all of the stuff I'm gonna talk about after we're done. So, um, some places this got listed as jQuery hacks with George, but um, what was asked for and what I prepared is very basic jQuery. And um, John uh, Sturbins actually suggested that I start with, you know, the J is small and the Q is capitalized in jQuery. Um, so uh, people wanted very, very basic jQuery, and I'm going to go into very, very, very basic jQuery. And the first question I'll answer, I kind of thought of this as, you know, what kind of questions are people going to have? And I'll, um, I've kind of figured out specific that they want to see um, that they can ask questions about. But the first question is, what does jQuery have to do with Koha? And so there are four system preferences um, that allow uh, Koha users to add jQuery and JavaScript into their Koha system. Um, and so knowing some basic jQuery can help you uh, do things in Koha before, or not before, but without having to do a development. So you can modify Koha without having to actually redesign Koha to actually change pages at the, at the basic level. You can actually make changes without changing the basic level of Koha. So, so the next question, of course, then is going to be, what are the four system preferences? And I've got them right here on the screen. There's intranet user JS, OPAC user JS, self-checkout user JS, and self-check-in user JS. And I'm going to flip over here. So this is uh, the first time we've been using the uh, uh, Koha US demo uh, 
demo uh, that uh, Bywater Solutions set up for us. And so I'm logged in. And if you go over to Koha Administration, and you can go to each of these, uh, you can find them in the list of system preferences. But the easy, easiest way to find all four of them at once is to do in the search box user js because these all have all four of these system preferences have user js in their uh, names and so here we've got self-check user js and uh, self-check in user js you're going to find those in the circulation preferences so normally they're under this tab um, opac preferences are under the opac tab and staff client preferences are under the staff client tab so that's how you find um, these different system preferences where you can insert JavaScript uh, and jQuery into your, into your Koha system. Um, one of the reasons that I am uh, the person that was asked to talk about this uh, is because we have a ton of JavaScript uh, at uh, Next Search Catalog. And uh, it's, you know, I've been writing jQuery for Koha since before we started using Koha. At a training, Ed Veal, um, well, I'll, I'll get to the first piece of jQuery that I wrote or, or watched Ed write and the first piece of jQuery that we inserted into the, into the Valnet system, which I think we have on our system here too. Um, but the most basic answer is you can use jQuery to modify the way Koha looks and operates without having to do a development. That's what Co jQuery has to do with Koha. Um, so the next question that people might have is, what is jQuery? And the simple answer to that is J jQuery is a JavaScript library. Um, so the immediate follow-up question to that is, okay, so what's a, what's a JavaScript library? Um, so in this context, it's uh, a predefined set of functions. And I guess the easiest way to explain this is a, a library in, in JavaScript is think of it like a cookbook. There's, you want to, you have this uh, piece of, you want to do something with JavaScript and it takes a long piece of code to do that. Um, the library is like a cookbook and, and the piece of J, and the jQuery is like a recipe. You, and so instead of saying, um, well, I've got an example here. This is one way highlighted here. Um, this is how in just with JavaScript, you could hide something on a page. You could do document, get element by ID, and then put a selector in there, and then dot style dot display equals none. So this whole first part, document, get element by ID selector, in JavaScript, in jQuery, Instead of having to do that whole thing, you can just put selector in parentheses surrounded by quotes. You don't have to type all that extra stuff. So uh, it's just simplified. And the whole part dot style dot display equals none in jQuery that's just dot hide empty parentheses. So and it's spelled out right here. The selector replaces the first part and the dot hide replaces the second part. So if I go home, or more likely if my wife comes home and says, what, what's for dinner? I don't say, well, I'm gonna take a pan and I'm gonna put it on the stove, I'm gonna put stuff in it, and then I'm gonna put in pieces of chicken, and then I'm gonna put, cook it for a while. Um, what I do is I say, I'm gonna make chicken. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing with the JavaScript library. Instead of saying, well, document, get element by ID selector. Instead of saying all that, all you have to do with jQuery is say selector. And then the next part, instead of saying those three things, all you gotta do is say hide. Um, so it simplifies all of these pieces of JavaScript and makes it easier to, um, to, do, with the, to do these things, essentially. Um, it's, it's the most used JavaScript library. Um, and there's a lot of flexibility that you can get out of that. There's some other things. There's sometimes when you're writing jQuery that you have to go in and write out full pieces of JavaScript because nobody has written 
a shortened version. Um, but there's a lot of flexibility with jQuery and Koha allows that flexibility to come through. So the most basic answer to this question, what is jQuery, is jQuery is simplified JavaScript that anybody can learn. If I can learn it, um, you can learn it. And uh, so there are some basic components of a piece of jQuery. Um, the statements all start with dollar sign and end with a semicolon. And selectors are inside of parentheses, usually surrounded by quotes. You can use double quotes or single quotes. Um, my preference is to use single quotes when I'm doing jQuery because oftentimes I will copy and paste things that are written in HTML and if they have double quotes in them, then the double quotes, um, then you've got to go through and straighten out all the quotes because you can't have uh, double quotes inside of double quotes because uh, JavaScript is going to think that the, that the first quote, double quote, and the second double quote, even though they're both the first in the whole statement, um, they're not gonna match up and it's gonna break your Java, JavaScript. So I always do single quotes, you can do it however you like. The important thing is, is anything inside of quotes, inside of quotes, you need to change the, the quotations. Um, and then, so that's the first half of the, of the piece of jQuery is the selector and the second half is an event or an effect or a, a modification and those um, they're separated the selector and the modification are separated by a dot and there's a usually a dot and a word and a pair of parentheses um, that could be empty or it might have something in it and whether it's empty or it has something in it is going to depend on what effect or modification you're doing so if you put it all together, this right here is what a skeleton piece of Java of jQuery is with no uh, data in it. It's uh, a dollar sign, a selector in parentheses and quotes, a dot, some more parentheses, and a, and a semicolon. So all you've got to do now is fill in the blanks. And that's where it gets complicated. So. So one of the words that I threw out here is selector. So what's a selector? A uh, selector is a piece of quote, code that tells Java, jQuery, um, which part of the page, which piece of HTML that you're gonna, that you're gonna mess with. Um, and so the first thing you're gonna need to know, a kind of a prerequisite to doing things with jQuery is you're gonna to need to know a little bit about HTML. And so if you don't know about HTML, don't worry too much because there's, it, it's not hard and um, uh, I'm gonna show you some tools that you can use to help you figure out what the selectors are. Um, but the HTML elements, you know, the HTML code has those things in the, the angle brackets, uh, P for paragraph, table for table, uh, div for a division of the page. Um, there's all kinds of things that uh, are in HTML. Span is a, is a useful one because a span can go around anything. Um, but these are the things that you need to select with jQuery in order to do something with them on the page. So the basic answer to that is the selector tells jQuery which part of the page to modify. And then what is an event, effect, or a method? Well, once you've selected something, you're going to want to do something with it. And that's what the, uh, that's what the events and methods are. Um, you're gonna, first, you're going to select something on the page. And then you're going to tell jQuery, this is what I want to do to that thing that I've selected. Um, so it's pretty simple. I mean, it's a simple set of instructions. You've got you say, this is what I want to change, and this is how I want to change it. That's all that jQuery is. is. Um, and what becomes complicated is trying to figure out how to select things sometimes, and then how to tell jQuery what it is you want to do with them. And so I've got some examples on the page here of some events are click, hover, toggle, resize. So, you know, if you hover your 
a pointer over something, um, the hover event says that when you hover over something, you're gonna, something's going to happen. Um, some effects are fade in, fade out, hide and show. You know, maybe if you hover over something, you're going to have something fade into view or fade out, or you're going to change the color of it. Um, fade in and fade out are, are useful with buttons. Hide and show are ones that I use all the time. And there's another good one called toggle, where you can switch something between uh, being visible and being invisible. Uh, and then we've also got methods like append and prepend and add class and, and .html and uh, ATTR. I didn't put that one in there. Attribute. You can add attributes to um, things on the page, which sometimes you have to add an attribute to something in order to be able to select it uh, because not everything is uh, easy to select. So the most basic answer is an effect, event, or a method takes the thing that you've selected and it does something with it. So how do you create a selector? How do you um, find, uh, how do you figure out what to select? And this is where I'm gonna jump over to our demo version of Koha. Actually, I'm gonna go to the homepage here. So, all of this stuff, there's the HTML underneath it that's building it, and that's what we want to look at. So one way you can um, look at what the HTML is, is to view the page source. Um, but this is kind of a lousy way of figuring out what it is you're trying to do, um, because you can't connect what you're seeing in the HTML with what's on the page. It's, it's more difficult. So what you can do, though, is you type control shift I, and uh, that will open one of the developer tools. So that's Control Shift I. You can also find the developer tools if you go up to the menu in Firefox or in Chrome and click on the, the menu and then go down to where it says Web Developer, and you've got this whole list of tools. Um, you can open the tool window. Uh, I always have it set to the bottom because that's kind of where I prefer it. Uh, but you can put it on the right-hand side of the page, uh, which I know some people like. You can put it on the left-hand side of the page. I have never met anybody that likes this on the left-hand side of the page. Or you can even put it in a separate window and throw it over here. It actually stuck that on my, uh, on my other screen there. Um, so you find that by going to the menu, I'm going to web developer and toggle tools. Now I got to put it back where I like it. There we go. And I want to get rid of that. I want to make this smaller. So when you are in this window and you hover over um, the things on the page, you'll notice that they highlight when you hover over them. Like if you hover over the body tag, it highlights everything because the body tag is everything on the page. Um, if we highlight, if we scroll over things in the header and click on them down here, it's gonna show us what it is on the page that you're um, clicking on. So there's the search box. This is the information for the search box. You can also, up here on the left-hand corner of this uh, tools, you can click on this little arrow pointer, and then when you move in the page over things, it will highlight them. And when you click on that, it's gonna take you to that, uh, to that thing where it is in the code, um, and you'll see all the things that are next to it. So um, this is how you find selectors. This is the easy way to find selectors. Um, and one of the things you can do here is if you, if you, if we highlight this, we can actually, if we highlight the whole uh, link and go to copy and CSS selector, we can actually copy the selector there. And this would actually get us a selector that we could use in a piece of jQuery. 
Um, this is not a great way to do it because um, we'll I'll kind of explain that in a few minutes here. Uh, but that's one way to find selectors. You can highlight things. Um, you can find them here, like if we wanted to find out what the, um, what the HTML elements are that go into the lists. We can highlight that, we can come over here and we can do copy CSS selector. And we know that that is the selector. What we've got here is the selector for this element here. So that's one easy way to grab selectors. Um, but there's some tricks to that and, and we'll get into um, We'll get into that in just a minute. I also, um, I wanna talk here about the internet user JS system preference. Um, so let me go back to that system preference here. And that's a comment that uh, we can ignore. Um, if you go to the Koha Wiki, um, what you'll see there in the jQuery library, and there's a link to that here, Um, but the first thing you see here is that you must include document ready function uh, at the beginning of the document, or you must wrap it around each individual piece of code that you put in here. Um, and there are two schools of thought on this. So first off, let me explain what the document ready function is going to do. It's the thing that tells JavaScript to um, that when the document, when, when the page is loaded, when the document is ready to be, uh, is ready, then it's going to run the jQuery that you've created. And so there are two schools of thought on this. Um, one school says put the first half of this document ready function uh, bracket at the beginning of the system preference. So one school of thought says put this right here, and then you have a whole bunch of like 50 bazillion other pieces of code here. And at the very end, you put the second half of this at the very end, and then you can put all your other jQuery uh, in here inside of these, inside of this one set of brackets. And um, what I've been told by a couple of different people is that uh, the, the other school of thought is you take every single piece of jQuery. Um, so like if you have 50 pieces of jQuery in your system, you put this function around every single one of them. Um, so those are the two schools of thought is you can do it uh, where each function, each piece of code is wrapped inside of the document ready function or the whole system preferences inside of that document ready function. So the two schools, the two things that I've heard about this um, are that uh, the first one's better because you're less likely to break, um, you're less likely to break your jQuery if each one is wrapped individually. And the other school of thought I've heard is that if you wrap them all in one document ready function, then the document ready function only runs fast, only runs once, which is faster. So I don't know which is true. Um, and I don't know um, if, if it really makes that much of a difference, but I always do it um, the first way, which is to have document ready function at the start and then the closing uh, bracket parentheses, semicolon at the end, um, just because that's the way that I've always done it. That's what I was told was necessary when I first started using Koha. And so if anybody thinks that this is wrong, you can blame Nicole, Engard, and Ed Veal because that's what they told me eight years ago. Um, both methods work. Um, I prefer the first method. Um, I have also discovered that um, some pages, most pages, you don't have to put the document ready function in at all. Um, but there are a couple of pages in Koha that still require it. Um, so there are some pages where if you don't have that document ready function in there, the jQuery you write will not work. 
um, and, and, but most pages it will. So why that is the case, I don't know. Uh, whether that's a bug or, I don't know whether it's a bug that it doesn't work on all the pages or it's a bug that, it, that, it's, um, that it's not needed at all. Um, I, I really can't answer that. But for the best results, you're gonna to wanna to put document ready function at the beginning and at the end of the whole system preference or at the beginning and the end of each piece of jQuery that you write. So how am I doing? Have I lost anybody yet? Does anybody have any questions? Is everybody doing okay? Soaking it all up is what Heather says. All right. I found my group chat, so let me put the links in here. John says, perfect. And so those are the, I just put the websites in the chat that you can go and learn more. Okay, so let's get back to this. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is um, show some very um, simple things that we can do. And I'll explain why um, we do them if I can get this uh, Zoom bar out of the way. There we go. That's the, uh, okay. So everybody should be familiar with the Koha homepage, I hope. And that's another thing I should say, if there's anybody here that doesn't see the Koha administration button, if you don't have access to the Koha administration module, um, you will not be able to do anything with, job, with jQuery or JavaScript. Um, so I'm assuming most people here are here because they have access to the, the preferences and they wanna be able to do something with them. If you don't have access to the Koha system administration module, you're not gonna be able to do a thing. So you should talk to your system administrator to see about getting permission to make those kinds of changes. So up here in the upper right-hand corner, it says that I'm logged in, it's got my username here, and it's got the library that I'm logged in at here. So in our system, people are not supposed to use their system login to check out materials. So we don't have, there's no need for them to see my account or my checkouts, theoretically, because they're not supposed to be able to see those things. So here is some jQuery that is really basic um, for how to make those things disappear. So let's look over here again, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open my tool, uh, my toolbar, developer tools, and I'm gonna to click on this link and I'm gonna go up here to the drop down. And this is where, this now I can see, and I don't know how well you guys can see this, but this is the um, selector for that whole, um, this whole space up here. And what I'm gonna do is actually, if I, I think if I open that, and then do the inspector, I can actually select my account and it will take us right to this uh, my account link. So this is the selector. This is the HTML that controls this my account link in the dropdown. And so, <clears throat> um, as a selector, I, as, a, as a piece of HTML, I can see that it's an A, um, which A is the tag for anchor. And um, this anchor has a class. So classes and IDs are incredibly useful pieces of HTML um, because a class or an ID gives you something to dig your to, to choose as a, a selector. If you can find something that has a class, you can dig that class out of there and then use that as the selector um, to, uh, in, your, in your jQuery. And so this is the actual link here and that dropdown menu, it's that whole element. The link is a part of a, of a list 
And I can see that the list also have a, has a class and it's called tool links dash my account. So this uh, drop down appears on every page in Koha. And I want to make it disappear from every page in Koha. So what I can do is I can click on this, double click on it, and I can copy that selector. And I can go over here to my admin module and I can just start building a piece of jQuery. And it's a class. So the way to write, uh, the way to include a class in a piece of jQuery is you start with a dot. If this was an ID, we would start with a pound sign. So I've got a dot to indicate that this is a class. And then I just copy the selector I took out of the other page there. And then that should select it. And I know that the command, the effect that I want here is I want to hide this. And I know that hide is um, H-I-D-E and followed by an empty parentheses. And if I save that, go back over here and reload the page, my account, uh, which one did I do? I did my checkouts. Sorry, I grabbed the wrong one. So I took my checkouts out of the, uh, out of the drop down. And I also know that I want to do this with um, my account. So let's go back here and find the selector for that. I just grabbed the wrong one. I personally, I, I happen to know that the one for that is my account. Now, if I go back and reload, now I'm down to just three of them there. And the code for that is here. Um, the first one is my account, the second one is my checkouts. So I made those disappear um, just with this simple piece, these two simple pieces of jQuery. Now there's something else I can go further here. I've got two things and I want to hide them on all the pages. Another thing that I can do is I can take my account here and I can put two selectors in one. I can, I can group selectors together. I can say, I want to make this disappear and I want to make this disappear. Um, so long as the selectors are separated by a comma, I can do that. I just stopped sharing accidentally, I'm sorry. Let me go back here. No, oh, I'm sharing the wrong screen. There we go. Move that toolbar out of the way, there we go. Now it's in the way of some other things, but I'll figure that out later. Can the toolbar in Zoom be moved to the bottom? Yes, it can, perfect. Uh, so let's see, I don't remember what I was doing. Okay, um, so they're both still hidden. It's just that I, um, I simplified what I had here instead of having two pieces of jQuery to do one thing, I've got two selectors doing the same thing. Now at a certain point, um, what you run into in Koha though, is these were really easy because they had classes that were specific to those, um, that were specific to those um, things that I wanted to grab. Um, you know, they had uh, uh, classes, top links slash my, dash my account and top links dash my checkout. Whereas another one up here, select library. And what we find if we look at select library is there is no class with that, um, with that um, LI tag. So we have to figure out a different way to select it.
And so the way that we get in there, what we can do is um, I can see that the LI um, has an anchor in it and the anchor contains the text set library. So what I can do here, uh, and I already wrote this out. I can um, use other parts of the uh, of that element to select it. So the first one I had a situation where I had the top links, my checkout was the class for that item, the, for that element. Um, here, what I can do is I can look up and I can see that um, this uh, this anchor, all of the anchors in this drop-down menu um, have a uh, class in them called top links. So the thing is, is if I just select top links as a class, let me, uh, I'm going to disable this thing by um, putting two slashes in front of it. That's how you write comments in jQuery, is you put two slashes in front of it. That's one way to write comments in jQuery. Um, so if I, if I just were to go after that select library by doing uh, top links hide, then what I'm going to get is I'm going to end up, if I reload this, I'm hiding everything because everything in there that has an anchor in it has that uh, class. So if I only want to pick one, and I only want to pick the one that says select library, what I can do is I can say, okay, I want the top link that contains, and then I'll put another pair of parentheses here, and this is where the double quotes come in. I think that's all spelled correctly. Then if I go back here and reload this, uh, it's, I spelled it wrong. It's not select library, it's set library. I think I've got that all spelled right. Nope. Top links, can, well, let's, I know this worked last night, so let's just copy and paste it. I must be spelling something wrong here. George, Todd pointed out that your contains is missing a T. Oh. Perfect. There we go. Now it's gone. So in this case, I didn't have a selector. I didn't have a class or an ID that I could grab onto. So I had to come up with another way to figure out how to grab that specific thing. Um, so there's a lot of that that goes on with jQuery and Koha, where you've got to, you know, not everything has a class, not everything has uh, an ID. So you've got to find other ways to, um, to figure out how to select those things. And this is the way we have it in our system. We've got search history and log out are the only things that you see when you're, when staff are logged in from that drop down. So let me stop again then and I'll see if anybody else has any questions um, or how things are going for everybody. I don't know where my chat box is, there it is. Actually, some of these um, were sent to me privately, some of the questions here, so. Brandy got here late. And she asked a question, and then she says, sorry, sorry, I see what's going on here. Okay. <laughs> and Heather says, now I want to change out checkouts uh, to my treasure or my precious. Okay. Well, let me show you how to do that. Um, let's get my checkouts here. Well, we can do away with just all of these right now. So.
let's make sure that we're doing this right. Um, so I'm actually, let me save this and reload the page. So we can rename things. So my checkouts, um, no, I didn't actually want to go to that. I want to click here and find that anchor. So the anchor is top links, my checkout, and we've got that. That's the class. And the, uh, excuse me, the anchor is, the text is my checkouts. And so we can do this by saying, we're gonna go, we're gonna select the, el the list element that's, that has a class, my checkouts. It's the only thing on that page that has the, the my checkouts. And underneath that, uh, so I know that top links my checkout is this element here. And underneath that element nested in there is this A, it's an anchor. And so what we actually wanna do is we wanna change the text of that anchor. And so the, what we wanna do there is HTML. Uh, I, think, I think HTML will work. I'm not sure if this will, my precious, there we go. So let me actually put that in the chat box for Heather so that she can actually go and put that on her system if she wants. So that was how to select things. Um, we've talked about how to select things by, um, that was actually was a good example of, of how to find things. You know, sometimes you can find things with a class, but what you actually want to change is underneath that class. Um, and one of the things that Koha does do is, um, you know, we're on a circulation page right now. The body of all the circulation pages has an ID. So if we only wanted to change um, if we only wanted to change that on the pages where we were in circulation, we could add that ID at the beginning of the selector, save this, and reload. And over here, it's going to say my precious, but if we go back to the home page, it's going to say my checkouts. And the reason for that is because you know, jQuery is looking first, it's looking to see if, if the, the uh, ID, it's looking for an ID called circ circulation. And then if it finds that, then it's gonna look for top links, my checkouts. And if it finds top links, my checkouts, then it's gonna look for all the A, uh, HTML tags, all the anchor tags. And if it finds one of those, it's gonna make the HTML of that anchor it's gonna make that into the uh, whatever HTML you put there. So this can be really useful if you only wanna change things on certain pages. Or a lot of times a class, the, the big difference between an ID and a class is that uh, on a page, there should only be one thing with an ID. Um, you should only see the ID once in a page. Um, and usually, Koha is pretty good. There aren't usually um, two things system-wide where you have two things that have the same ID that are different things. Um, but a class, um, you can have lots of things that have, um, you can have a class repeats itself on a page over and over again. Like you can have all the list elements on a page have the same class or all of the, uh, all of the uh, parts of a table might have a similar class. Or you might see things where um, you see odd and even classes, uh, things like that. You know, classes can repeat, but IDs don't. Um, I say they don't, um, they, in, in some cases in Koha they do, 
used to. Um, like about eight years ago, there were a couple of IDs where there was the same ID that was um, connected to two different things. Um, but I think that's mostly been fixed up. Um, so that's kind of the difference between a, an ID and a class. Um, and I actually had some examples of how to select things by ID. Because we've done a whole bunch of things with classes, but uh, I'm going to go over now to the um, search page. And under advanced search, we have the subtype limits, um, which uh, if you're uh, cataloging in a public library, you're going to have a lot of things that might have incorrect or not have any subtype limits at all. So it's kind of uh, pointless to have filters on subtypes if you're not going to have a uh, catalog that supports that. And so one of the things we have in our system, since we do have a lot of bad cataloging, is we just hide the subtypes. And what's that, what this is doing is it's selecting this whole group of subtypes, um, this whole field, this whole set here, is called subtype, and this is going to hide that whole set. So if we reload it over here, the subtypes are gone. And so the other big difference between a class and a uh, ID is that the class is identified by a dot in the selector and the subtype is identified by a pound sign. Now there are certain situations in Koha, and I couldn't uh, think of, uh, I didn't think of this last night. Um, there are some times when you see an item, and buttons are usually a good example. Uh, let's go to, uh, I go to an item, if we look at the buttons, what you'll see a lot of times in the, in the classes on buttons, you'll see a whole bunch of spaces. And so if we were to put that in here and put a dot at the beginning, the class there, um, the class here where it says class equals button, button dash default, drop down dash toggle, that's not one class, that's uh, one, two, three different classes. So the way to actually select that in here would be you're gonna wanna replace all of the spaces with dots. So if you try to select something with a class and you see that the class has spaces in it, well actually let me do it first with the spaces. See, I've theoretically, I've selected this uh, save button, but I haven't actually selected it because um, the class isn't, that isn't one class, that's three classes. So if you replace the um, spaces with dots, whoops, not zeros, dots. Do that, and then we'll hit reload. Now the button is gone. But the thing there is that it wasn't just one button. There's uh, like three buttons on that page that have um, that, same, that same set of classes attached to them. So if we actually wanted to hide one of those, we would have to find um, some other way uh, of doing that. Um, the classes, or the IDs, excuse me, um, IDs, um, there's usually only, there's only one, you're only able to put one ID on an element. So you're not going to see situations where, um, where you have IDs with spaces in them. At least I don't believe so. So one of the things, um, there are a couple of these that I did specifically, um, that are based on things that we do in my own system. Um, so
so like I said earlier, one of the things that our staff can't do is they're not allowed to switch libraries once they log in. We also don't want them to uh, change libraries uh, when they're logging in. So we can make this um, login dropdown disappear on the, uh, on the login page if we don't want to use that. And so let me log out. So this is what it looks like normally. This is probably what everybody sees. Um, with one library, um, it's really kind of pointless to have the drop down there anyway. But what this is doing is it's looking for, I need to log back in before I can make any changes. Um, this is the ID for the login page. And that's the ID for the drop down. But this is another situation where um, we've got a couple of things going on. So it's really easy to select the, uh, let me hide that again. Sorry, I'm getting a little disjointed here. All right. So let me log out. So this drop down here has an ID and the ID is branch. And so if we just choose to hide the, everything with a branch ID on that page, All it gets us is hiding the dropdown. It doesn't hide this little label that says library. And that's what that element is called, is it's called a label. So it's label for library. But if we were to just hide everything that's a label on this page, it would also hide username, password. So we need to figure out a way to tie into that, to select it. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the page with that ID and the uh, login form, which is what that uh, whole box on the home page on the login page is called. And then here, I don't want it to select every label. I just want it to select the label for branch. So let me save this and go back out here. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna look at this label. And I can see that it's a label and the label has this attribute attached to it called for. So it says what the label is for. The label is for this select this drop down here called branch. So it's a label for branch. Let me log back in so I can manipulate this. So what we're doing here is this label. By putting this for in brackets, we can um, say, show me the label where the element for equals branch. So first, jQuery is going to look for the, to see if we're in anything that has an ID called main auth. And then it's going to look and see if that main auth has anything underneath it called login form. And then under login form, it's going to look for any labels. And then anything we put in the brackets, um, we're going to, is going to be an attribute. And in this case, we're looking for the for attribute. And so any place where the label, where the for attribute equals branch, what we're going to do is we're going to hide that thing. That's how we hide that label. So that can be the trickiest part of jQuery um, is figuring out how to connect into things, how to select the things. There's another thing though, let me go back here. Um, let me put this um, 
Minoff back in here. So, so this hides the label and this Minoff branch that hides the dropdown. So let me go back here and look at this. And if I go over here, the thing about this is um, hide just makes things invisible. So the label, you can still see when you use the inspector, um, you can still see that the label for branch is still here. It's just now it has CSS attached to it that says style display none. And the drop down menu is still there. It's just hidden. So it's still on the page. Um, it's just um, been hidden. Um, all the, the jQuery is doing is um, making it invisible. There's another command we can use though, instead of hide, called remove. And I saved that, so let me log out again. And so I've, um, I hid the label, but I removed the, uh, the actual dropdown. And so I can still see that the label is still there, it's just invisible, but the remove um, uh, method actually removes the dropdown from the page at all. And there's some advantages and some disadvantages of hide, and there's some advantages and disadvantages of remove. So Todd's question um, that I see over here is, can you use jQuery to make a function key stroke associated with logouts? You can, so if you wanted to have a, 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 a hotkey that you could use to log out a Koha just with a keystroke instead of having to go up and go to here and then log out, yes. I am not prepared to go through that process today. Because <laughs> hotkeys are, um, hotkeys I wouldn't say are, are basic jQuery. I think that's more advanced. So I think I covered all of these things. So um, I can also show you, this is the first piece of jQuery I learned. Um, so, Let me go to patrons and let me go to new patron and adult. So, um, I guess I didn't realize, you know, I figured this would take uh, less time than it has. I didn't realize it's been a whole hour. Um, so maybe I should stop there and um, everybody's got the links to this, to this page and you can see what else I was going to talk about. Um, maybe I went too basic. I don't know. Let me stop sharing my screen and people can unmute themselves and chime in and, uh, and talk. So, provided anybody's still actually there. Yeah, that was great, George. Not too basic at all for me. Okay. <laughs> How about you, Jason? Did you learn anything? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's a ton of stuff you can do with jQuery. Um, uh, it, uh, there are a lot of things you can do. Um, you know, the first piece of jQuery I learned um, from Ed and Nicole when we were doing the training uh, eight years ago uh, for the Valnet migration. The, what I was going to show you was the first question, um, one of the first questions that came up was when we're, Nicole and Ed are showing people how to enter a patron. Um, one of the fields in the, uh, in Koha for patrons is surname. And um, one of the people in the group asked the question, what's a surname? Um, and we had to say it's, it's a last name. And so I immediately thought, you know, if surname, if, if there's one, you know, I have a background in restaurants. My, um, my knowledge is that uh, if one person complains about something or asks a question, it means that there are 10 other people that have the exact same question 
that just weren't afraid, that were too afraid to ask it. So I figured if one person in this room uh, knows, doesn't know what a surname is, there are going to be a lot of people that don't know what a surname is. And I don't, didn't want things to be confusing for anybody. So Ed showed me how to use jQuery to change surname into first, into last name. And then other name, that was confusing to people too. So we added text to that. So it said other name, nickname slash other name. And um, then after that, it was uh, in Valnet at the time when a patron got a library card, their um, password was set as, did, as their uh, last name. And at the time, we didn't allow patrons to change their password. So it was library card number and last name. So we wrote, Ed showed me how to write jQuery that took the patron's last name and as soon as the last name is, is in that box, it automatically turn, fills the password. So Ed showed me those things in one week in, during training. And uh, like a year later, I discovered that um, there's a limit to how much jQuery you can put into Koha. It's like a, I don't know what it is, like 60,000 characters, that's the max. And that's what's great about jQuery is there's a whole bunch of things that maybe you wanna have in your system or you wanna change about your system, the way it looks, the way it feels, that you don't have to do a whole development to get it in there. You don't have to change the Koha code. You can just, you know, if you wanna change surname to, for, to last name, all you gotta do is put in like, a tiny little string of jQuery, and it does it for you automatically. So, is that still the character limit? I have no idea because I really backed off. Um, and one of the things that's nice about uh, a lot of the jQuery, um, there's another link that I wanted to share with everybody that it is in the, well, I did share it, I did go to the page. Um, this is the link to the uh, Here we go. This is the link to the uh, uh, Koha wiki with the jQuery library. There's a whole bunch of jQuery there that um, maybe you have something that you want to do that uh, somebody may have already written something that does that. So, and there's tons of stuff there. A lot of it is probably out of date. This. Um, uh, some of it you'll see says like, you know, Koha 3.2. Um, so, uh, so there's a lot of stuff there. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. And if you go out there and find things, you can always put them in there and test them and see if they work and see if they want to do what you do, what you're doing with your system. And the thing that I would say about it is that, you know, um, a lot of people will tell me that I'm so smart or that I'm, you know, really good at this. And um, then I will work with them and I'll see what happens is that they will, they'll start off and they've got an idea of what they want to do. And if it takes them longer than like 10 minutes to get it done, that's like, I can't do it. Um, and that's the thing that where I'm different is like, if I get to a brick wall, I will just bang my head on it until I knock a hole. Um, if I can't get a selector to work right, um, I could be up half the night trying to figure out, you know, what I'm doing wrong. And then it's something as simple as, oh, I forgot the T in contains. Um, but that's the thing that's um, most important is to persevere and to keep banging your head on the wall until you knock a hole through it. And, uh, and so those are my recommendations. Um, if we want to do, if there's enough interest, we could do a like part two of this, where we could do instead of very, very, very basic jQuery, we could do very, very basic jQuery. Um, and uh, I'd be totally willing to do that uh, in a couple of months. And there is another question here from Todd. George, do you know if uh, the limit is uh, for all of Koha or is it a system preference? Um, I, or per system preference. I think it's per system preference. There was a limit and I think it's because of, there's a limit of how much data you can put into a, I think there might've been a limit to how much data could go into a MySQL uh, field. 
but I'm not sure about that. I have never tried to test that limit again um, because it was annoying. Uh, but what, you know, a lot of the things that are written in jQuery a lot of times um, will eventually become part of Copilot. Like Christopher Brannon in uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho was annoyed because there was, um, it used to be that when you, um, at the search box on every page, you would have uh, check out, search for patrons, search the catalog. And if you type something in search for pay and check out, and then switch the tab to search for patrons, you would lose that data. And so Christopher wrote jQuery to make it so that that persisted through all of the different tabs of that search box. And enough people saw that jQuery and somebody incorporated it into a future version of Koha. So the jQuery was no longer needed because some developer just made that a part of Koha. And that's what's happened to a lot of my jQuery is that it's no longer needed because somebody has actually built that function into Koha. But surname is still surname in Koha, but it's last name in our system. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna stop the recording um, and I think I don't see any other questions. So it's good to see all of you and uh, have a safe and happy day.